Has that run out already? <laughs> oh, look, I've forgotten about the rush of streaming. I thought, oh, I've got heaps of time. Not a drama. We'll be there. Hang on. What's going on here? Oh, I'm getting feedback. Wait a minute. There you go. That's it. Got rid of that. At least we got sound. I know that's happening. Um, let me just pop the chat out. Oh, I tell you. Where are we? Report. Oh! Here we go. I did a test last night to see if everything was working, and it was, and this morning I'm not. Although the YouTube has changed um, their format, so what you used to think was good value, now all of a sudden, well, I guess it's still good value, it's just old blokes like me can't work it out. I'll be with you as soon as I get it set up. Oh, dear, oh, dear. We'll be there in a minute. Just hang in there. There we go. I think that's, that's there. That's there. That's there. I'll just move this over. And I just realised I didn't even do my intro. So I'll go back and do that. Oh dear, it's been a while, isn't it? There we go, all looking good. Wait a minute, I'll just, if I can, if, if I can, I'll just got one more thing to do, which I'll see if I can do. See, all this should be done before. But those that have been following me through the years know I'm about as organised as a manic cat in a cotton factory. That is a good expression for you, isn't it? Manic cat in the cotton factory. Ah, oh, dear. Um, what's on? Here we go, here we go. We'll do that. And we'll see what happens there. It does, it, does, it just sneaks up on you, I'm telling you. There we go. Okay, now we'll go back there and I'll go back here so I can see what I'm doing. I'll go back there. And what I'll do, I'll pretend none of that happened, all right? We'll start again. Timer has finished. You've got to use your imagination. Timer has finished. Hey, welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. It's been a long while between streams, I understand that, but life is what life is. What can I tell you? Um, this stream, I want to focus on sharpening. Look, I still haven't eaten my breakfast. It's been sitting there for 50 minutes. There, oh dear. So I'm going to concentrate on sharpening. Not a definitive um, expose of sharpening, but it's just methods that I use that may help you or may spark an idea into you to change or you might give me an idea that improves the way I sharpen. I know not, but we'll give it a go. Who have we got in the chat? Uh, Ray, mate, g'day, long time. How's it over in Western Australia? Trevor, mate, how, how, how was your pizza last night? Ben, howdy, howdy, g'day, Louise. Uh, Chad, good morning, long time no chat. Young XLN, get up, all the way from Canada. Well, hard energy out to you in Canada, all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Thanks for popping in. G'day, Wombat. Angry, mate, haven't seen you for yonks. How's your building going? Are you getting there with it? Uh, James, good morning. G'day, Dennis. G'day, T-Bone. Oh, this is nice. I'm back into it. I'm enjoying myself. What's going on here? Oh, I'm going <laughs> to show you this because I'm not going to do it, but... If this was smell of vision cop this. Where are we? Wrong one. There we go. Look, ah, that's hot. Look at the lovely mould on that glue. You know what? Bob's going to get so excited he'll smell that two kilometres away. But I have to clean that up. Oh, by the way, too, we're in a simulcast. This is exciting. The first time I've ever done a simulcast, so I'm pretty thrilled about that. And it's through the Carbotech. Uh, channel. I think it's going through Facebook at the moment. 
we might see if we can organise this to go through YouTube. So welcome everyone that's watching on the Carpet Tech Facebook channel. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. And I hope you pick up some tips, tricks and ideas. Um, if you want to chat, apparently from what I understand, you have to have a YouTube account. But by all means, if you want to and you've got a YouTube account, jump in the chat room. There are a friendly bunch in there. Any questions you want to ask, ask away. Any suggestions, please. Nice ones. <laughs> um, pop them in there too. And I'm, I'm really so welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Um, what I'm going to do is start with the really, really basic sharpening. Then I'll walk my way through up until up to the uh, most expensive. Or not most expensive, the most expensive I use. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not getting paid for any of this. It's gear, as, as you will see, it's gear I've had <coughs> for a long time. And um, I think my first Tormic over there, which is, let me give you that one, uh, which is that one, which is, I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't see it, so I'm going to have to. Hello, look who's come in to say good day. Bob, come here and show us your scar. Come here. Come on. Look at that. Remember, he had a, he had a big, Come here. Big tumour on his back, and we've had that cut out, and he seems to be pretty good. Mutt, and, and the dog next door bit him in the face and ripped his lip open. We've got all that fixed up too. And this morning he was into his old tricks. I, I had all these, these keys. Oh dear. These keys made specially uh, for a job that I'm doing, and they're all covered in high glue to toughen them up because they're very, very fragile. And wouldn't you know it, he came in and found them and he's out in the yard chomping in. I, I, I saved most of them, but I think he got half a dozen of them. And I was gonna show him, I mean, what are you doing there? Look, hey, look, come here, Bob, Bob, Bob. I gotta shake, Bob, Bob, Bob. Come here, look. See, he's just found another one. <laughs> he's a mutt, now give it to me. You can't have that one there for a job. All right, you go and find something else to chew on. Go and chew on mum's favourite sweater or something like that. Oh, yuck, it's all got dog slobber on it. Um, hang on, come on. Yes, you, look, there's another one there. You were just... Oh. So this... I don't know what camera I'm on. Doesn't matter. I bought this. <laughs> He's got another one. He's out. He's not even going to wait to show me that one. I bought this um, Tormic, I think, in about 19... Gee whiz. About 1996, 1997. And it still works well. I use it for um, carving tools ostensibly because it's small. But it does the job and it still works after all those years. Anyway. That's at the end of the day. We'll get some other ones out of the way. In the meantime, oh dear, oh dear. Ah, uh, oh mate, did you see the storm last night, James? I thought the rabbits were going to do them. For those of you who don't know, that's an NRL uh, rugby league match that was on last night, and the Melbourne Storm they won for all those players. And the hearts and thoughts go out to all you people in Victoria. That are doing it more tough, I believe, than the rest of us in Australia. <laughs> he's, he's finished that one. Go away. No, don't look at me like that. Gee, I wish I could get this one around quick enough. The looks I'm getting. Hey? Uh, are you right? Did you enjoy that? Was it good? You're on camera now. People, people like you. I don't know why. Look at the tail wag. How yeah, could you not love something like that? It's a trouble when you use high glue. It gets the dog all excited. He's going to love that rotten stuff when I throw it out. Um, so, yes, James, our thoughts and uh, prayers with you all lot down there. Oh, where are we up to? Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Uh, Zion, good day, mate. <laughs> hey, I'm live again. I got, I got coerced into it. I did, all good ask by this 
this lovely lady. Can you do something? <laughs> She's a sweet old thing. Ethel, if you're watching, this stream for you, my dear. Hope you get something out of it. Um, so, yeah, I got coerced into doing a, a sharpening stream. But, uh, look, I don't mind, but I'm not doing 57 days straight. Okay. G'day, Jared. How are you? Uh, <laughs> I'm not getting political, Ray. Uh, Dennis, morning. Am I missing anyone? Am I getting everyone? Um, David, hi, Zeon, hi. Oh, be nice, Ray. Play nice. John, g'day from sunny Sydney. Is that my, my kids, I've got a couple of kids living in Sydney at the moment. They reckon it's a bit cool down there. Oh, dear. Oh, Max! I, my morning's now complete. Max is with a broom man extraordinaire. How are you, mate? I, I hope gardening's been kind to you. John Bradley, hi from. Okay, from. Well, hi back. Oh, I okay, got you, Ontario. Uh, um, yeah, look, Bob, Bob's okay. He wasn't too happy because when he got his face ripped off, he had one of those buckets on his head. <laughs> he didn't like it. I picked him up in the MX-5, right? A little sports car, convertible, the roof's down. He gets in, it's all good, I'm going home. I don't like this vet place. Got in there and he stuck his head out the window as he normally does. The bucket full, full of air, and he began whiplash. Nearly had him in full traction. But he's good now. He's good now. Oh, Max and Trevor, the dynamic duo are back. Uh, it was a good game. Oh, pity Rabbits didn't win. <laughs> I was hoping they would, but they sort of left the, they left the field half an hour before their bodies did. Nada, good morning to you. Okay, well, I was coerced here. Don't give me snickers, Zeno. True. Match, good day. Uh, yeah, it's great for the shed, isn't it? Lockdown, I'm getting all... Well, I don't know if I'm getting stuff done. I'm, I'm no... Well, I must be, because I'm making more of a mess. Uh, thanks, Max. Uh, Peter from Maruduck. Where is Maruduck? I wonder. Well, welcome everybody. Good to be back. I'm going to get a mouthful of brekkie in the meals. I'm going to pass it out from starvation. Mmm. Mmm. Tell you what else I picked up. There you go. Remember the end of the last lot of streams? I said I want a coffee machine down here. Got one. No, I had to pay for it. No. Nespresso weren't kind enough to give me one. But I'll have a coffee about half past ten. Mm. No. He wants me breakfast now. You're not getting it. No, don't care how much you wake it up. All right, let's get into this sharpening thing. Carbotec, good morning. Looking forward to sharpening. Yeah, there's a bit of a preamble before we get there, but but pleased to have you on board. Uh, and if you've just joined the Carbotec Facebook page, welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. I'm Steve Hay. Uh, this is mostly woodwork, or should I say mostly mayhem, with a bit of woodwork thrown in. But we do get stuff done. If you've got any questions, please type them in. Uh, you do have to have a YouTube account to do it. But there you go. If not, I'm sure, I'm sure if you message um, Carbotec on their Facebook page, they will somehow or other get the message to me and I'll answer it to the best of my capabilities. Uh, furniture done right is on Mornington Peninsula. Well, there you go. G'day all the way down there in Mornington or up there. I don't know. Oh, you got me geographically. I'm geographically challenged. Mornington, that's down south, isn't it? That's in Victoria or is it in Queensland? I don't know, because there's a peninsula up there because it's a pointy bit. No, that's the York Peninsula. So it's in Victoria. There you go. G'day, Alan. How are you, mate? Okay. First topic, what we're going to do is I've got a Drambuey set of chisels here and untouched by human hands. Not even Bob's got hold of these. <coughs> Let me see if I can get a close up. 
No, other one might be better. There you go. Which one is that? That's that one. So they're um, they're not bad chisels. They're not super squished. They're not definitely not Arab and Saxon jobs, but they are a good chisel that will work. But they are straight out of the box, and when you get a chisel straight out of the box, this is what they look like. Grinding marks on the back, grinding marks on the top, and quite frankly, they're as blunt as get up. They'd be flat out cut and cold, uh, warm butter. So what we're going to do is shut them. Don't try that with all chisels because some come out sharp. But <clears throat> these aren't. They're as blunt as... The, the unfortunate thing is a lot of people, they'll buy tools and they don't have it. There's nowhere in this box does it say these chisels need to be sharpened in order for you to use them. They just give them to you. And uh, a lot of people think, oh, I've bought them, I can use them. Not the case, unfortunately. The upper end of the, uh, one of my screens has just gone dead, wait a minute. The upper end of the tool ladder, they come out and, yeah, they're sharp. Is that going to work? Yes. Um, they're sharp. I mean, name dropping, you got, I guess you call Bridge City, Lee Nelson, uh, Veritas, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, possibly, um, oh, what is it? They made lovely planes too. <laughs> I've forgotten what they're called. Ah, uh, Clifton. Clifton planes. A lot of those, they all come out of the box. You know, you know if you've got a Veritas, come out of the box, boom, you can use it all, say, uh, straight away. Same with the Lee Nelsons. Uh, Stanley's you can't, um, records you can't if they're still making planes. You have to do some work on them. So that's what this stream is all about, how to get sharp. There's a huge amount of um, speculation, arguments, pontification and opinions. Should I go hallway grind or should I go flat grind? Which is better? Which is sharper? Which stays sharper longer? Look. And these are just my opinions, okay? That's, that's all they are. And let's face it, I'm married the only time I can express my opinion without interruptions and when I'm streaming. And I'm lucky because Susie's just gone into town. Yes, she might call in later on. We'll see. Um, but honestly, the hollow grind or flat grind, it comes down to what you use to grind your chisel. If you're going to use stones, they're going to be a flat grind. If you're going to use a grinder or a round stone, it's going to be a hollow grind. But whether you use a hollow grind or a flat grind, with one exception, they are all flat ground at the business end, at the tip. So don't get hung up with, oh, should I flat grind, should I hollow grind? Is one stronger than the other? You can do um, mortises. I've, actually, Paul Sellers uh, has a, a brilliant one where he does... Um, a mortise for a mortise and tenon joint, and he's got a piece of glass on it. I don't know. I don't know who, who did it first. I know um, Peter did it first. Well, Paul did it first, or I think I might have seen Rob Crosman do it once. And it, it looks great. They've got a sheet of glass. I'm not going to do it because I'd break the glass. And he cuts a tenon just as well with a firmer chisel and a bevel chisel. One's flat ground, one's hollow ground. Really makes no difference. So, what we'll do, the very first thing, I'm going to start at the thinnest chisel first, which is ugh, that one, which I guess is a quarter inch. I thought that was raining and some air conditioner kicking in, because I've got the top down in my car. Okay, we'll do, where are we? This one first. First thing you have to do with any tool basically, whether it's a, a plane, whether it's a chisel, um, anything that has a, a flat cutting edge, you've got to get that back flat. I'll, get, I'll give you a graphic reason why, if I can find, here you go. All right, here's a bit of timber. Um, and I, I haven't got a squirt bottle, how organised am I? Here's a little trick for you. If where are we? 
Yeah. If you're going to use a vise and you've got wooden jaws, whack a little bit of water into it and it will hold your job so much better than if it's dry. Actually, I could put this in the tail vise. Um, no, we'll give it a go here. We will see. Okay, in effect, when you have a chisel straight out of a box, like this one, and it has those machining marks, these aren't too bad, but some I've seen are absolutely terrible. Those lines there, each one of them is a ridge. And in effect, you haven't got a flat blade to cut. It's very, very similar, and this is a bit overboard, but this is a toothing plane. Oh, if I can get it out. And I've got to get used to these camera buttons. And here, that's the back of a toothing plane. Now, their furrows cut in there. So on the front edge, that's serrated. So what happens when you use it is we'll get some if you can see that you can hear it they're all lines there's no sheen on the wood and it's rough now that does have a, a place. The um, toothing plane has a very definite place when I'm veneering to give me a key background on the substrate. But in effect, if you haven't got that nice and flat on the back of your tool, that's the sort of cut you're gonna get. Whereas if I, here Bob's off. If I use a plane, that I know is flat on the back. Now I'm going to go because I've got, there you go. Now see those shavings? They're coming off because I'm getting a nice flat cut because the back of the blade is flat. And you can see that's, that's actually got a shine on it. So, number one, we've got to flatten the backs. And that can be as easy or as hard as you like. What I do, this is basic sharpening, about as basic as you can get. Get a piece of glass, which I find is the cheapest, or if you've got a piece of flat granite or marble or whatever, use that. This, this is a, oh, it's about, I don't know, eight mil. Um, sliding door out of an old piece of 1970s furniture. It's tempered glass and nice and hard. I picked it up from the tip shop for 50 cents. So there you go. You don't have to spend a lot of money. The other thing I would have liked, um, a more coarse wet and dry paper. This one I'm using here is um, 360. I would have preferred a 240, but I couldn't find one, so there you go. I thought I had some up in the blacksmithing shed, but I didn't. Let me just have a look, see how we're going here. Well, it's the wrong one. That one, there you go. Um, oh, let me have a chat first. Got, got to catch up. Oh, do you think I'm ignoring you? Ah. Oh, Max, honestly, no, it isn't my back giving me curry, plus I dropped a hunk of wood on my... You would do less damage to yourself wood turning. Buy yourself a life. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um... I remember that. Yeah, where was it? Um... <laughs> I don't want to get into a carpet deck show, Trevor, but yeah, where was it? It was Harry's, no, not Harry. 
Harrison Street or Harry Street or something or other. Yeah. And uh, they do have good stuff. And then they moved to Harris and now they've moved out to their big shop at, was it Wakeley? Wakeley, that's the place. I, I like going out there, do you know why? Because Theo only lives up the road and I'll go and get a coffee. Although I might, I might put the bite on Carpetec for a coffee. Then they come and have one of my Swiss coffees on my machine. Um, word, 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 learn, Andy, it's Andy, isn't it? Your mic comes when you move near your coffee machine. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that's not the coffee machine. That's the, um, the uh, glue pot going. So I'll turn the glue pot off. Nathan, hello, big puppy, good morning. Michael, oh, I have six loads. I really shouldn't buy myself anymore. <laughs> Why not? You never know when you need another one. Eggman, I see some jugs of Type Bond and Type Bond 3. What's your take on the best one? Um, honestly, Eggman, it, it depends what you're using it for. I use, I'm building um, native beehives or native beehive boxes and I use there you go. Type Bond 3 for those because it's waterproof. And I also, where are we? Do a fair few chopping boards. And for that, I use Type Bond 2 because Andrew from Type Bond said that that was the best stuff to use for chopping boards. So I do what they say. Um, and the, the original one, I like that because, where are we? Yeah because it goes off very, very quickly. If, if you have something that you just want to tack on, um, yeah, it's pretty good. And I've been told, I've been told, it doesn't creep. Now, I've been told that I can't verify it, but so far I haven't had any creep, so. Fingers crossed. Wayne, g'day, mate. Oh, mate, I'm always happy, Andy. But <laughs> you can never have enough. Hum is still there. Yeah, well, I've turned it off. Let me know if it's still there now, right? Uh, yeah, no, I turn it off, but it takes a while before it goes down. So if the hum's still there, it's got something else, something else happening. G'day, Dennis. Mate, have you, have you got Ruth a hot chocolate? You got <laughs> Got to look after them, that way they look after you. Uh, it's the camera most likely. I could say something, have a speaker on or... Oh, hang on, let me just... I do have an amplifier on over there, which I... Oh! But it shouldn't, because... Let's see. Let me put me... Oh, you're right. I can hear it. Okay. No. No, you're right. I've got, I've got, see, I've got. I don't know what that is. I, oh, hang on, it's, that's it. That's on. That's on. Don't know. Let me just see what else I've got on. Do a bite on the Okay, is that gone? Let me try that. Oh, oh. good on you, Steve. You kicked the whole pile of rubbish over. Oh, dear. Yeah, it is there a bit. I don't know. Um, it's one of those things, I think. Just going to have to put, oh, put up with. I do not know. Let me just... Turn the phone off just in case. It is. If not, we're going to have to put up with the hum until I can find out what it is. All right. <clears throat> um, so, bit of wet and dry, piece of glass. Uh, this is kerosene in there. Put that, whoops, let's go around the other way so I haven't got a finger hole. Oh. Put a square to that on. The paper you will find will end up lying flat if you've got a bit of caro under it and on it. 
It's called atmospheric pressure. Now, when sharpening, a lot of people I've seen, they do this. And those of you who have seen me for a while know every time you do that, you're actually changing the angle. So you'll never get a nice grind or a dead flat if you're doing this. The trick is to rock on your heels or your knees or your hips or whatever, hold it flat and then just rock backwards and forwards. Just like that. And you don't have to flatten the entire back because really you only need it where your point's going to be. So I'll come back about an inch or whatever. This is, bearing in mind, this is 360 wet and dry. Downward pressure and I'm just leaning forwards and backwards. And as soon as I change that pattern that's on the back, I know that I've got it flat. The good thing about flattening your chisels, you've only got to do it once. All right, now I don't know if you can see there dramatically. I'll see if I can get a, a light on it. No, it's not going to work because it flares. But there is straight grain there and then I've got the rotary grinding marks there so I know I'm through. So what I'll do now is I'll change over and I might go... I've got a bit of 600 here. What's that? It's 1,000. I don't know what that is. Uh, a bit of 400, that'll do. It's a little bit of, you're going to take my word for it, but it's 400. Put that down there, squirt on the top, hold it flat, and again, just backwards and forwards. Like that. And if I look there now, that's nice. It's not super polished, but it's dead flat. <clears throat> now, to get, these are hollow ground, which means these have actually been ground on a wheel. So, have I got, I haven't got any real big ones to show you. Oh, dear, oh dear, maybe this one. Ah. If I hold a straight edge to this, you should be able to see the light. Which way are we going? There we go. Okay. You can see a bit of light between the top of the hollow there and the tip. If that was flat ground, there you go, and just see a bit of light through there. If that was the flat ground, it would be flat against that straight edge. So, these are hollow ground. It doesn't really matter which is which. You can say, oh, look, I want to get a certain angle on it. But in all honesty, the idea of getting a sharp chisel is so you can get back to work and start enjoying what you're doing. So I would use a texter and just... Do that so it's black. We'll keep this at 400 and pick it up until you'll just see a meniscus bulge. <laughs> There's a word for the day, isn't it? Bulge. No, meniscus bulge is when you tilt it forward, you'll see a little bubble come up here. It's too small for you to see on the camera, but and the paper will change colour. Soon as you're there, that's the edge of the blade sticking in. That's what you want to sharpen. So bring it up and then just bring it up a fraction above that and again, lean forwards and backwards. 
Don't use your arms. Lock your arm into your side like that. And just go backwards and forwards a couple of times. Now, if you have a look, there you can see it's silver right on this edge, but not quite here. So that means I haven't been holding it flat. So I'll make a conscious effort to hold it flat. This, this is a little bit tricky on such a small piece of paper. But now you can see we've got texture, except for right on the very edge. Now rub it on the back of your finger and you should feel a burr. That's, it'll, something will just catch the tips of your uh, fingerprints. That's the burr, that's what we're after. Once you've got that, turn the chisel back over, put it down and just a couple of little strokes like that. And then one the other way to very lightly to clean it up. That then, I'm, I'm not going to do what I did before, but I'm, I'm going out on a limb here. That is sharp. So you can then... Pair a nice piece of timber with that. Okay, that's number one. That's the easiest, cheapest, most economical way to sharpen blades. It's not the most dramatic way, but that's number one, sharpened. So all you need is a flat surface, a bit of wet and dry, uh, as I said, if I was using a bigger chisel, say I was using an inch and a quarter, I would like something a bit rougher than 360 to do that job. But I would work my way through and then it's up to you whether you want to go beyond 400, you know, take it up to 1,000 or whatever. Um, some of the, the, the sharpening bits and pieces out there I think are a little bit over the top when they start talking about taking things to 10,000. Look, if it's a cutthroat razor, Fair enough, you might need it, but we're talking woodworking tools here. Not, not of prime importance. Okay, that's number one. And that will get your tools sharp. <laughs> oh dear, I've just, I've just knocked all my bee boxes over. Hang on, wait a minute. That'll get your tools sharp and get you in the woodwork for a minimum cost and a minimum amount of fuss. The next way is, where did that rag go? There it is. <laughs> is with stones. Oh, hang on, let me, let me catch up. No, honey, oh, that's good. <clears throat> G'day, John, how are you? I told you I'd be back, I told you I'd be back. Pizza last night, Tim Tams today, Trevor, you, you just, you're spoiled. We're all moving to Trevor's place. Um, work on poor man's drow project. I d what's a drow project? Um, just started randomly hitting this with my mallet bound to help. Yeah, you know, it does, isn't it? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I've missed some. If I've missed you and there's something important you want to ask, please retype it. Yes, the hum's gone now. Do, 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 do. Uh, Jillian, g'day. How are you? Good to have you back in the room. Uh, oh. <laughs> was that a self opinion, that one, Trevor, that you're worth it? Or was that um, from a wider consensus? Oh, that's the next one I'm moving on to, Eggman. So there you go. G'day, Andrew. How are you, mate? Yes, <laughs> Sue's shot into town. She might come down later on. But we are all well. We're well. 
Had I finished my electric lathe last time, not electric, electric forge last time we were down here? It's a, it's a Bobby Dazzler. Thanks, Dennis. I hope it works. <laughs> Just send them over, Andy. I'll do it. Not a drama. <clears throat> oh, digital readout. Gotcha. Thank you. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks, John. Look forward to that. And not just you. I think that's a bit mm, tongue in cheek. Zeno, uh, beyond two. I am here. Oh, what's the rest of my. Have a good night's sleep, mate. Thanks for staying up this late, too. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Julian. It's nice to be back. I'm actually getting the old mojo back, which is good. Uh, all right. The next one we will do is this is a 3 8 and for this I'm going to use stones there will be a couple of noticeable exceptions when I do this uh, one is water stones absolutely nothing wrong with Japanese water stones it's just I don't personally use them um, for no other reason than I think I've got enough sharpening apparatus around here without going further but I know a lot of people do swear by water stones and I know they work but that won't be in this demo however this next one can be used on water stones I'm gonna have another mouthful of breakfast if that's all right oh dear mm. sorry okay now as a rule I just use a normal twin-sided stone which has <laughs> carborundum on one side which I never use aluminium oxide on the other and this is a Norton stone I think it was all of about 30 bucks um, and this is over 30 years old the trick that I do use when I made my box is I put four, three little brads in either side, just cut them off with a pair of snips so there's a point. So tap them in, cut the heads off for a little point. And the reason for that is, so when I'm using it on my bench, and this is why I don't go in for really great expensive swath sophisticated benches, I push down on that, that will not slide forward. Whereas if it didn't have them, it would slide forward. This stone also is about the 30 year mark um, same thing got the brads in there and this is the same composite only this is a rougher stone it's aluminium oxide carborundum on that side um, that was a Norton's one too I, I use it I much prefer the finer grade one if you can get and I will show you why so what I'm going to do initially is flatten the back using the coarse stone and then I'll polish it on the not coarse stone. But you will see why I don't like this. See if I can get a good shot of this one. There you go. You'll see why I'm not a big fan of this. Kerosene or a light machine oil and it doesn't matter how much you put on there it never stays on the top it just sinks right into the stone like that comes out the bottom and it just um, wets your timber but for the purpose of this exercise this is what I'm going to do again we've got machining marks on the back there you can just see them in that light same same finger on downward pressure sweet we might go we get my go a little swish here there you go um downward pressure oh where's this other one wait a minute we we might we might get super Super sophisticated here. Can I do it? 
Look at that. Bench cam. Good on you. Okay, <laughs> down like that. And that's locked into my bench. And I'm just going to rock backwards and forwards. Just that's it. Backwards and forwards. Equal pressure on the two fingers. And, and see if you can use the whole stone. So I'm starting at this edge. And I'm gradually going over to the other edge. And I reckon that'll just nearly do it. Nearly there too. So I said these are thirsty stones. Okay, just behind the cutting edge there is nice and flat. I don't know if you can see it, but we've got curves up to there and then that's flat there. So that will do that one. I'm not worried about <coughs> the other side using the core stone. And you can see there that that is actually, well, you can see, whoops, where are we there? It's actually soaked through the stone and through the box. Let me just put that one away. As I said, this one's over 30 years old and it works very, very well. And the main difference with this is the um, Kero stays on the surface a lot longer. Now I'm just going to very lightly touch this up. This is a smooth stone. So this is going to take any roughness out that the previous stone put in there. In that regard, it's very similar to water stones where you start off at um, whatever grit and work your way through. Now you can, I hope you can see it, right on the very end there, it's actually polished. That's what we're looking for. So I'm happy with that. Let's see if you can, where are we? Yeah, you can just see right at the end there, uh, whatever that is, it's nice and polished. Same thing. <coughs> now this is if you're freehanding. You have your stone there, chisel on like this, pick it up, and just when you hit the edge, you'll get a little change in the colour of the stone, providing you've got enough stuff on there. And then you pick it up a fraction. So what you do is pick it up a fraction, slide it forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Feel for the bevel. I haven't got one there yet. So we'll give it a few more hits. And notice I'm still going across the stone. That stops me from wearing a hollow in the stone. Okay, I've just got a little bevel there. But before I finish that, what I want to do now is go on to... That's how you do that freehand. But for a very, very small investment, you can... And I'm looking for them. Oh, dear, oh, dear, they're over here somewhere. Oh, where did they go? Oh, here we go. Here they are, fear not. There they go, and I should follow, for I am their leader. <laughs> All right. As for something else while well, doing a little bit. You can get these jigs which are very, where are we? Very, very effective. This one is an Eclipse, but I know there are generic ones on the market that will do exactly the same job. Here's a, a different one for maybe if you've got a much wider blade that'll fit into this one. And uh, it's got a wider roller on the back too. So they, they are not expensive, maybe 20 bucks or something like that. Now, on the side, it tells you 
Let's see if we can get that. Is it going to focus? There we go. Focus. There you go. It tells you the projection to have your chisel out to get whatever degree you want. Now, I want a 30 degree project projection <laughs> on mine because I like having my chisel's cutting edge at 30 degrees. And that's not written in uh, stone. These Robert Sorby ones here, they're actually grounded to 22 and a half and their cutting edge is 25, but they're only for cabinet timbers. I wouldn't be using them on hardwood or anything like that. So what I've done to make it easy, and this is what I used for years, what I've done to make it easy is I made these little jiggers up and that's 30 degree for a chisel and that's a 30 degree for a plane. Now how they work is you just put your, get up here, whoop, let's go this way. Put your chisel in the bottom one. Now, most chisels go in the bottom one. That's why I've got two different size jigs because a plain blade sits in the top and that's a different projection. But it does tell you that on the side of the gizmo. Now, with this, I just put it there, put this over here, make sure the edge of the chisel's up against the fence, move my jig up, give it a tighten, and that is it. Give it a bit of a tight with the screwdriver. Oh dear. Just a nip. Make sure that that lines up with that as it does. So now I don't have to worry about um, rocking my body or anything like that. I've got a wheel that's going to give me a steady. And I've got the angle set. So now all I've got to do is, uh, what we'll do is, same thing. This isn't a bad thing to do. A lot of sharpening I do, I use the texture because it lets me know what's actually happening. So here we go. And again, go across the board. Try not to come off the ends because you can roll your cutting edge if you do. Have a look. And you can see we're all right here, just right at this on this very corner here. So what I'll do is when I'm doing it, I just put a little bit more pressure on this side. I need a couple of rubs and that should do it, I think. Okay, and there you can see we've got an edge all the way across. And I guarantee there's a burr underneath there, which there is. Good thing about this set setup is you can keep it in the jig and take that burr off. Again, just backwards and forwards, a couple of times, feel it, it's gone. Now, if you want, you can just give it a very right, light rub that way, just in case there's a little bit of a hinge there. Then we'll take that out. And we'll give it a go. There you go. That's number two, easy way. Now the other thing I haven't mentioned yet, but is a great idea if I can find mine, is grab a leather strop. Leather strops, uh, I don't know the science behind it, I really don't, but they do keep your... Um, tools sharp. So whenever you've finished sharpening, just give it a couple of light rubs on the edge and on the back. And even when you're working at the bench and you can feel your tool starting to get a little bit dull, just give it a whack on the leather strop. I've got nothing on that. That is just pure leather. Um, over time it's had stuff on it, but I haven't put it on there. 
So, I, as I said, I don't understand the reasoning behind it, but I do know that it works. Okay, now, so far, what we've done is I've lost the box of chisels. Well, tis was. We, we've sharpened, but we're dealing with carbon steel. There are a lot of other steels on the market now. Um, you've got P11, um, AO, A1, M2, um, high speed, all these other ones, and they are a lot tougher to sharpen. And if you've got that style of steel in your tools, these two techniques I just showed you might not be all that um, effective for you because it's really, really hard steel. So then we can move into diamonds. And um, this, is a, this is a DMT, I think. Where am I? There you go. Yeah. And it's, it's well worn. It really is. I've actually got a new one here, which I'll demonstrate on. So they come in a variety of grits, um, as is on the side there. You've got extra fine, fine, coarse, extra coarse. The ones I like is blue and red, which if you look on there, it's fine and coarse, which is basically the same as what I used when I used those oil stones. So we'll give those a go. Thing with um, diamond stones, I've got, yeah, oh, here's another brand too. Um, I use these a fair bit. These are Easy Lap, which you can also, where are we? Oh, it's down there. Which, these are little paddles, and they do come in other, I'm not sure if DMT does these, I don't know. But uh, again, you've got super fine, fine, medium. Medium is the one I use mostly. And I'll show you if we've got time how to sharpen or brighten up router bits using those. The other thing is, this is a little diamond um, steel. And it is useful for, uh, what have we got? If you're doing some wood turning and you don't want to go back to whatever your sharpening preference is, with these you can just quickly run it on the inside and maybe give it a couple of rubs on the outside and you'll find it'll brighten your tool up and allow you to keep turning without having to stop. So, what are we up to? The next chisel, this one. All right, we'll do the same. These, these are cool, they got these little supposedly non-slip rubber strips, so we'll see how it goes. Non-skid, it's called. So we'll go on the, the rough side. Oh, that's what I was going to say. If you want to know if your diamond stones still work, I've got one here that I did have here that I've had for over 30 years when diamond stones first came out and I thought, you know, it can't still be working. But the test is, can't find it, doesn't matter. I use this. The test is this feels smooth. It really, when it's new, you can feel the roughness of the diamonds on there. But if you get a piece of glass and rub it on a clear piece of glass and it scratches the glass, you know the diamonds are still working on that. So just because it doesn't feel as if there's anything, I mean, this, let's do it to this one here too. No, I'm not getting there. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still getting scratches on there, so this is still good. If we were to put a brand new one on there, we should get a, you can actually hear that. So, you know it's working. That's the way to test a diamond stone. Okay. So we'll put, I'll use a new one. Ah, 
the expense I'll go to you for you people. Now, pop that on there. Let me have a chat. And then we'll get in there and we'll do one on the diamond stone. See you, Zeno! <laughs> Four, has it been that long, Ray? It is, it is, John. I said I'm going to have one now. And check this out. Oh, I love this. With up past 10, that'll do me. All right? These, these, I wish an espresso wasn't paying me because I'll get more coffee. But these, check it out actually have a barcode on them. That pretty pattern around the outside, that's a barcode. So it tells the machine, which I've got to turn on, let's see if that buzz comes back. It tells the machine how much water to put in the coffee. So if I'm having a, a long go on an espresso or a double shot, it automatically knows. And I just put that in there, press that, what do I do now? I've forgotten. Oh, look at this. Here you go. This isn't paid for either. Well, I did the stuff was paid for. This is a local company. I love giving people a plug if they're local. They're in um, at uh, Wynnum in Brisbane somewhere, and they make these most amazing coffee syrups. Oh, so you don't have sugar in your coffee anymore. You just have flavours. And um, I went berserk. I got, what did I get? Butterscotch, caramel... Vanilla, chai, Irish whiskey, and oh, there's one other one. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, yeah, so that's it. I, I don't have sugar anymore. A couple of squares of caramel, and I'm away. And we press the button, and things should happen. I don't know if they will or not. Nothing, nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Oh, no, here we go. It's starting to. There we go. Look at that. And you're right, my favourite coffee shop, with all the lockdowns, it stopped. So I couldn't go there anymore. So I thought, no, I'll, I'll go and buy a coffee machine. All right, where did we get up to? Is the hum back? Um, I'm, I agree, Julian. You can, no workshop's complete without a coffee machine, a fridge and a dog. <laughs> we, oh, you saw the electric light. The, the electric force. Oh, that's right, you did too. Oh, this is so nice, Ray, you would drink coffee. GB Thompson, lanolin and spray will last longer on top of your stones and machine. Well, there you go. Thanks very much. Good tip there, lanolin spray. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that, BG. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a philanthropist you are, Michael. That very altruistic of you. And then, then to undo it, you just go like that. It automatically dumps it, and there you go. Ow! It's hot. Too hot for me to drink. But check out the throffy top. Heck, where are we? Look at that. Isn't that nice? Well, I'll tell you how nice it is in a minute when I start to drink it. Ah. Dump it. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I like 30 degrees and 
and later on, I'll show you the only exception to not having a um, 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 secondary bevel. <coughs> see you, Ruth. See you, Dennis. Well, there you go, Julian. Yep, now O1's good. It's a lot tougher than carbon. Um, so this diamond stone might be your answer. Or well, the other thing which I'm going to get onto shortly is zirconia belts. But that's, I think that's the next one after I do this one. What's my, I'm going to tell you my preferred method at the end, Eggman. Hazelnut, that's right. Yeah, that's the one I missed out on, BG. Hazelnut. Got hazelnut too. Oh, it's nice. Now I'll check this out. I haven't finished my breakfast yet. I will. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, a bit hot. I'll put it next to me breakfast. Mike, <laughs> warm me breakfast up. Ah, uh, no harm. Well, it wasn't the coffee machine. Ah. Uh. Thumbs up, James. Thanks for that. Oh, I, <laughs> I like that. See? There you go. Someone's got their priorities right. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Where's the chiswell? Uh, same thing. I use, I use kerosene on this as well. You could use water. Um, I'll show you later on something else you can use with diamonds, but for the main part. Here's the same thing. It's on there. We are, let's go all cams. We've got machining marks on the back. So now it's, and you can, you can feel this is a new stone. Uh, there are cheaper ones on the market, for sure, but I can't comment on how good they are. I've liked DMT for a long time because they work. I'm not going across the stone on this. I don't know why. Perhaps I should. All right, I will. Okay, now, if you have a look at that, that was, say, medium pressure. But let's see if we can get it down here. Okay. But now you can see I've got straight scratch lines here from the diamond. And then we go back. Let's see if we can get that focusing. Focus, Daniel son. Oh, we watched... We watched the whole, we binge watched Cobra Kai. If you've liked the um, Karate Kid movies, watch Cobra Kai. It's on Netflix. I'm just trying to get this to focus. Perhaps I'm too close. There we go. Okay, there. All right, so you can see that from there back is round grinds and from there is straight. So I'm going to flip this over. That was the coarse side. I'm going to flip this over to the fine side. Give it a squirt. Bring that back in. Up, 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 up. Come here. There we go. Okay. Same thing. Apparently it doesn't hold it very well if it's wet. But anyway. Do that so you can see that. Still again with the rocking motion. And there I've got it's not as polished, but it didn't take very long either. But there's uniform marks down the back. Nearly see a little bit of reflection in there. In fact, if I go to the, the worn stone, <laughs> well, there's a trick. Don't, don't use kerosene when you're using a non-skid mat because it doesn't like it. Well, you learn something new every day, don't you? So perhaps I should have used water. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'll hang on to it. Um, I'm just going to... This is a worn one. 
So I'm hoping I'm going to get a bit of a better polish on that, which I do, which I do. So a lot of um, sharpening stuff, don't throw them away because sometimes you don't need something that's so aggressive. If you look at that, that's actually quite nicely polished on the end. So that was finished off on the worn stone. Now, same thing. We can, if you like, we can use a jig. Um, wherever it is, here you go. We'll slip this in here. Light it up to here again. Ow! That could have been nasty. And the great thing about learning all these different methods is if something happens in you in an unfamiliar workshop or whatever, and you have to sharpen, if you know several ways of doing it you're not going to get caught out. Now this is very, very light and I've got a burr underneath there. I don't want to take the burr off of that, um, although I will. So we'll do the whole shebang. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use the worn one to take that burr off. What you can do, if you uh, have a burr on there and you don't want to use a, this stone to take the burr off, you can just get a piece of timber and put the blade in the corner like that and just go like that and you'll find that will strip the burr off or if you're like me, use the corner of your bench. So that should be okay. Okay, get a strop, a couple of little passes. And there you have it. Another way to test if it's sharp, just on the back of your fingernail, just rest the blade. Don't cut it, don't do it, just rest the blade there. And if it catches, it's sharp. And your brain, your brain's a marvellous thing, it'll tell you it's sharp. Um, okay, so we'll test this one out. Just, just to prove a point, I'll get one out of the box. We'll get the next one out. Put this one away. And I'll see if I can pair a bit of timber with this. Oh, it does do it, but it's a hard push. Yeah, no, it's not digging in as nicely as it, it should. So we'll give that one. That one's not too bad, actually. It's, but I will do, I will do that with that one. There's no one in the world I'd do with one. I'm just sharpened, I tell you. Uh, all right, let's go on. So that's the um, manual one. So we've covered just straight wet and dry. If you haven't got wet and dry, just use ordinary sandpaper. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's, that's the one that's 30 years old. And it's still it's as, as smooth as anything, but it still scratches glass. Now we'll move on to machines to do the rest of them. If I can just get a little bit organised here so we can see what I'm doing. Oh! Okay. 
Um, on the other thing, oh, I'll show you on this one. The other thing you won't see me do here today is use a grinder, uh, a full speed electric grinder. The reason being is I don't like putting my tools on grinders. Um, they will sharpen, but they don't do as good a job as any, many of the other um, opportunities I have to sharpen, so I prefer not to use them. However, I will give you some heads up on it. If you are using a, a bench grinder, and the majority of them will run at about oh, 2800 RPM, 2840, something like that. And when you buy them, that's the wheel you get. You get a wonderful, I might just put this back up here. You get a wonderful grey grinding wheel, which is fantastic for removing metal. If you want to get rid of some metal in a hurry, that's about a 40 grit. What I suggest you do is take at least one of those wheels off and replace it with a, either a um, aluminium oxide wheel, which does a pretty fair job, doesn't heat up your steel quite as much, and uh, this one's a 60 grit, but I personally, for my tools, I prefer a ceramic wheel, and this one is 120 grit. Um, so, you know, you still do get sparks off, and don't forget when you see sparks, that's molten metal. And you don't want molten metal, because molten metal generates heat, and heat can change the temper. But now with all these different steels around, there's so many stories for and against. A little trick, uh, which I can show you on this one. Um, yeah, I can. This, uh, this one, by the way, this is a, let's see if we can get all cams. There you go. It's a, um, a Robert Sorby, I think they're called, what are they called? Pro Edge. I picked this one up at a garage sale. Um, I, don't know, I don't think I paid too much for a bit under a bucks or something, but as you can see, parts are missing and it's had a bit of a rough life. But it does the job. And for this, I like using these wheels. These are Ciconia belts. They don't generate as much heat and they're not as hard on your tools as ooh, aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is the, the ready coloured, let's see where we go. Yeah, aluminium oxide is the red coloured ones and zirconia is a blue coloured one. And you'll notice when you're using zirconia belts, you don't get as many sparks as you do using the aluminium oxide. So there's a courses for courses. I've got big um, grinders and, and linishes up in the blacksmithing shop and I use the conia belts on the blacksmithing um, work too because it, it's just nicer to the steel. All right, did we get another chisel out? I don't know. Uh, we did. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. Now, this one, I've never done this before. This... Um, set up really, oh, I believe, was designed primarily for wood turning and it works very well, but I use it for all sorts of other things. So we'll see if we can get a flat back on this. What I need, of course, is an extension cord. Do I have an extension cord around here? $64 question, isn't it? Oh, that will let. There we go. What's the bet I want to use the table saw next? Where's the cord? Where's the cord, Huey? Where does it go in? Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh. 
Now this is a very worn zirconia, so I'm just going to touch it very lightly and we'll see what happens. I'm going to go this way because the belt's going down that way. Excuse my back and we might be able to move this around here so you can get a bit of butchers. There we go. Very lightly. There's not many sparks coming off. I'm rubbing it from side to side because I don't want to get a ridge here. And that's interesting, actually, if you look at that, that's flat, that's flat, but there's a hollow there. Uh, that, look, we might as well get it out. But that just goes to show you might think your chisels are flat, but they're not. And that's a very good example of a hollow right in the middle there. Not too much pressure at all. For the purpose, I'm going to leave that in there. And uh, if you look at Japanese chisels, actually, they have a hollow behind them. So that's the only part we need flat, which is flat there. Okay, so I'll turn this off. And if you notice here, it's got all these, these diagrams. And on the side, it has all these corresponding holes. So what I do is I just put the table into the hole and they don't want 30 degrees. So it's got to be that one there. I'll screw that in there. I love the little um, wrench they have on there too. It's quite well thought out that. Okay. So now we'll come back here. That position there corresponds to 30 degrees here. As I said, when I bought this, there's a lot of bits and pieces missing. And, and one of them was a, um, a box that can slide along there. So I just braised together a 90 degree section myself. Well, let me just shut this door. I've got the air con on and I've got the doors open. That's a bit silly. So this fits in there like that. And I can get my chisel, put it there, and hopefully we'll get a good edge. So we'll, we'll see. I do like this one if I've got a second hand chisel that's pretty well gone. I get my initial grind on this, but we'll see how we go. So I'm holding that up against the edge and just gonna just touch it. And there we go. I've got a nice 30 degree secondary bevel there. I'm gonna knock off, so I've, got a, I've got a burr there. I just wanna knock that off. So that's gone. Now it's on the front. So I'm just gonna very lightly touch this. And that's gone. I'm gonna actually go back to the leather strop with this one and see if I can brighten that one up. Because for me, for, for lathe tools, it's a bit different, but for cabinet tools, you just gotta be a little bit delicate with it. So we'll just pull this on the leather strop. And there we go, we got rid of the burr on the strop. 
Where is it? A bit of timber. Oh. There you go. See, we've taken a, a good cut on that, whereas before it was sort of not doing all that well. So, okay, that's another way to sharpen. Oh, dear. Someone asked what my preferred method was. We're coming up to it now. But it's only because I have the tools at my disposal. These, I don't know if you can buy these machines anymore, actually. Oh, I know you can overseas. I don't know about in Australia. But it's... Um, oh. It doesn't look like much, and it's messy. It really is quite messy to use. But it's a... Um, a Makita 9820. You can, if you're lucky, I bought, I've got two. I bought them both second hand. One I think I got on Trading Post and one um, somebody I knew had it and wanted to get rid of it. But they are great for flattening things. And where is this? Oh. You do need to put a, a tube in there because water accumulates and goes everywhere. And you have to soak the stone for a good 10, 15 minutes before you use it, which isn't a problem because sharpening is generally not one of those things you sort of instantaneously want to do. Not, not a big sharpen. Okay. Now, the, if you don't look after it, If you don't look after it properly, it all rusts away there. And you just gotta sort of line everything up. There we go. This is my preferred method for doing my planer blades and jointer blades. Because yeah, I'm old school, I haven't got helix cutters. And again, nothing wrong with them, um, but I like, I like the blades. Okay, and there's a water reservoir that sits on top there. Then, we look around with some water. And it's got a regulated drip feed. Through this hole here, you can turn it so it just drips. The more water that comes out, the more polished the steel is. Um, so more water, less stuff removed, but more polished it becomes. Where's another? Oh, we're up to this one now, yeah, okay. Again, we've got machining marks there, which you can see. Now by using this one, It, it does make a mess. You just push down. This is a thousand grit stone, I think. And you can put a fair amount of weight on these before you stall it. I don't think that was too long a time. If you have a look at that now, that is nice and polished. We've got a low spot in there still there, but that doesn't matter. I'm not too worried about that. So that is very, very quick. And then to actually
do the edge, you set this thing up. And you put your chisels That sounds suspiciously like a wife coming down here. I could be wrong. Is that you? It was a wife. You're going to come and say hello to the peoples? Oh, I can come and say hello to the peoples. Danny, what? Oh, you got a job for me. Good on you. Scissors need sharpening. Next stream, we'll sharpen scissors. Okay. Are you, well, there you go. Come here. Come here, don't be shy. Me? Shy? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hello. Hi, everyone. There you go. They've missed you. Have they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah everyone's... I'm the star of the show. I'm not going to tell them what you did at the football. It's just not right. Well, go on, talk. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> I just come to get my scissors sharpened. Hey, yeah, look, Max says hi, Trevor hi. says hi, Julie hi. says hi, John says hi, Andy says hi, Ray says hi. I don't get that hey, many when I come in. Ready? Gross moment. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I'll go finish cutting out this pattern. I'll find another pair of scissors. She's making, she, she's making, making stuffed toys, toys at the moment. Because, because I don't know, since the last stream, we, we, we're having another grandchild. We're granddaughter, apparently. So, yeah. She's going to have lots of toys made by Nan. Might be the only toys she has. <laughs> not so, nothing. All right. All right. All right. I'll leave you to it. I love okay. You. I, I love you too. Yeah, okay. um, so you want. I need them sharpened. Oh, well, I know a bloke that does can so sharpen them. Should I take them and then bring them back next time, or can you do them for me before? I'll do them. I, I might even do it on a live stream. Mate, for two reasons. One, it proves that I do stuff you tell me to do because I'm in fear of you. What? Dave, did you just go like that? No, I went like that. whoop de doo oh, whoop de doo yeah. You know what I've got to put up with? See, you wonder why I come down the shed. <laughs> yeah, to avoid me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crikey. No, I'm not. You been up to the cake shop? No, they didn't have anything. They didn't have any cakes. Well, I sent John in, not me. Oh, well, there you go. All right, Chuck, I'll do them for you soon. Oh, I'm just setting this one up. <laughs> ba -dum -ba -ba -bum. I, I'm just setting this up. I think she's going to talk for longer. Bob's out of here. Okay. I don't think I'll be able to. Oh, I might be able to. I don't know. I'm not sure if I can show you this one because I um no, I don't think it's gonna work. The reason is the screws that hold this on, these screws are too short. I do have longer ones, but I don't know where they are. But anyway, I'll show you how it works. So that's basically you you tilt that to get the angle you want for your chisel and then you just turn it on and do that and it gets sharp. But this one's not going to work, so I'm sorry about that. But you saw how good it um, flattens the back of chisels. We might, we might do a freehand one. Let's we'll see if we can do a freehand one. There you go.
Oh, you ever have those days? Max, are you still there? I'm having one of your days, mate. There we go. Okay, I'll try this freehand. We'll see how we go. No guarantees on this one. Doing that until I get a a bevel. Nearly. There we go. Yeah, that's freehand. But you can see how nice and polished that gets them on the edge. And we'll give this a try. Oh, well, that was nice, Susie, you come down. I thought you'd at least bring me a cake. We're left with the last one to go now. But I'm going to have a chat before I do that. Um, turn that off, move this. Take that out of there. Ah, oh dear. Oh. Big job. Morning, Sue. Everyone says hello to Sue. Yeah, good on you. Uh, da -da, da -dee, da -dum. <coughs> yeah, you yeah, also well, binge watch, did you, GB? Oh, it's great. I love it. I did binge watch Cobra. What is it? Cobra Kai. Awesome. What I found so interesting, I'm going to digress. What I found so interesting in Cobra Kai was when you watch the Karate Kid movies, particularly one and two, you, you think the, um, I forgot what the guy's name is, but anyway, the, the baddie, he's just a mongrel. But when you get Cobra Kai, you get his side of the story and then you think Daniel's a mongrel. So very, very, very well written, very, very clever. And um, for those of you, the grey hair generation, <laughs> the actors are the same actors that were in the movies. So you actually see them 30 years later. And um, fortunately, none of us have aged, but they had. But yeah, it was good. Mm. Yeah, John, you'll enjoy it. Oh, Andy, you're a bit on the money there. I'll get onto the Tormic in a minute. Well, yeah, the BG, it's not only the grand finale, I'll move it in the camera, but what I wanted to do was start with the cheapest, most economical way, and then, sure, I'm, I'm going to talk about the T8 in a minute, but it just goes to show you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars 
to get a good edge on your chisels. Whereas if I'd come out and started with the Tormix straight away, a lot of people would be turned off because, let's face it, they are expensive. But there's a reason they're expensive, and it's because they're darn good at what they do. I'll get on to that in a minute. Oh. Oh, dear. Where are we up to? Oh, there you go, GB. There you go. You're getting a pro edge. Yeah, look, they are. They're great. Especially, especially on lathe tools. And they give you a nice flat grind too. But get, um, get the zir zirconia belts. 120 grit. The, <coughs> 120 grit is the only one that I use. And that's it. That's their zirconium belt 120 grit. And they just last and last and last. They're good. Uh, well, I must admit, uh, GB, I, I got a, a fine, one of those fine multi-tools. I don't know if it's over here. It was in the metal box and everything. Talk about thievery. Where is it? Is it there? I might have put it somewhere else. Oh, it could be up in the top shed. But, um, yeah, if you know the, the tool I'm talking about, it's a high vibrating, oscillating multi-tool. And, oh, it's just brilliant for certain jobs. And, again, it was a garage sale I went to, and the guy, guy said, oh, I said, well, how much do you want for that thing in the box? And he didn't know what it was. Bearing in mind, in those days, they, they were about $500. And he said, oh, I don't know. He said, it's just a grinder. He said, it's a no-name grinder. I've never heard of it before. What about 50 bucks? <laughs> You've never seen anything so fast as that 50 bucks coming out of my pocket. I've got a pet mouse and it's running up and down. Providing they don't eat my food, I don't care. They can live here. So there you go. You do get bargains, but you've got to be Johnny on the spot. It's the Pro Edge making the hump. Well, it wasn't plugged in before. So I don't know anyway. <coughs> I'll just get rid of all this. Bobby's doing his cat. Yeah, he's coming in for food. Oh. <laughs> oh, thanks, GB, a BG. I'll tell her. I'll tell her she's seven eights. Actually, she's twice the woman she was after that cake shop's open. Oh. They have these absolutely fantastic apple slices. Well, not apple slices, apple turnovers. And I've called them wife fatteners because <laughs> Susie just loves them. And they are, they're delicious. And then um, even the cake shop now, they say, oh, do you want a wife fattener? And we've decided that's politically incorrect. So now we call them spouse enlargers. No, they are, they're absolutely gorgeous. Go down to Mr. P's at Flagstone, down here, down the road, get yourself an apple turnover, best four bucks you'll ever spend. McDonald's is next door, so you can compare prices, but I tell you what, you can't beat those apple turnips. <gasps> and the vanilla slices, the only vanilla slice I've ever had that I had to eat in the bath. Oh, yum. Yeah, I know, Max. It's nice, isn't it? We're too old <laughs> to break in anyone else. Oh, dear. Yes, please sharpen scissors. Oh, dear, oh, dear. All right, I'll do that. Um. Oh, yeah, that was an aluminium oxide stone. How to cut six 
by two with 30 degree tow from standard power tool. With standard power, currently sh shredding hand saws. I, yeah, I'd use it. Well, it depends how many you've got to cut, I suppose. Just set up a jig, make a little jig up, put a fence on it and clamp it to whatever board you're doing, then run your saw up against that. You'd be able to do them until the cows come home. Three D printed the true grind jig and sharpening. Well, there you go, Michael. Awesome. All right. Well, let's go to the. Let's go. This is my my favourite combination. To be honest, is that Makita for flattening the backs and sharpening on the Tormek. And I said in most cases you're going to have a secondary bevel. Everything we've done up till now, I've had a secondary bevel on. The only one I don't is when I'm using the Tormek. And the reason for that is because of the jigs and this little thing here. There you go. Which one are we on? There you go. And the beautiful thing with that is this dial here sets the angle you want and this you can change. It's got a cam on the end you can change to the diameter of the wheel. So I've got a relatively new wheel on there. New wheels coming in at about 250 mil. This one, well, I'll compare the two. Oop. Oh, dearie, dearie, dear. This is a, oh, a full size, full grown one. This is one of their diamond stones. And that, is a stone stone, and you can see how much I've used. But the beautiful thing with these is, when they get past um, what I want to use them for straight edges, I take them up to the shop, my wood turning shop, and as you can tell there, that's got a fair gap in it, but they're great for doing gouges on. And it doesn't matter if they're not flat, because I'm just doing gouges, or uh, parting tools or something like that. So anyway, we'll do the last one on the Tormik. Now this is a diamond stone for the Tormik. They're not mine. I don't own them. I rang up uh, Promac, who are the people that bring Tormac into Australia. And Michael um, was kind enough. And hello, Renee, too. I'm not forgetting you to, to lend me his demonstrating models. So I haven't used these before, but I thought... I'll bring them on and just show you. There's three stones. There's a coarse, a medium, and a fine. He's given me the, I think that's the coarse one. That's about 320 grit. The fine one's about 1,200 grit. And the medium's about 600 grit, I think. Um, might get around to using one of those shortly. But before we do, I might as well talk about it. The thing I do like about this is this edge here stays flat. And this edge stays flat. You don't have to dress the wheel. Obviously, I don't know how much they are, but there's a cost involved with them. But I would say if you had one, you'd never need another wheel. And the good thing about this being dead flat is you can flatten the edges of your chisels on it. Supposedly, you can on these wheels, but I personally prefer to use a Makita. But we will give it a go. We'll give it a go. We'll flatten it on the side of the wheel and then we'll sharpen this one up. Um, this is a standard, standard, um, ba, 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 ba. let's go all. Shall we go all? No, you don't want to see me back. Here we go. Those two. Um, this is a standard wheel. There is a black one you can get, which I'm told is good for different steels like uh, M2 and P11 and what have you. This one I find works pretty well with all, all steels. It's a water wheel, as you can tell. And um, not much to talk about, really. The jigs you get with it are varied and wide-ranging. The one I'm using at the moment is the flat blade jig. And I'm sure it's got a number. If I can find it, I'll tell you. It comes with the machine anyway. Um, doesn't have a number on it. But you get this with the machine. 
Oh, well, gee whiz, <laughs> those mice are fast. I don't know what they're eating. The good thing about it is, with that other jig I was using on the stones, you had to have things out at a set distance to get the correct angle. But with these, you can have the protrusion as much or as little as you want. <laughs> it's a different kettle of fish with turning tools, but with your basic straight edge carpentry tools. That's how far I'll have that out. Then we'll go over to this and I'll put that over the bar and then using the angle finder Oh, we were, we were going to do the side first. I then put that on there and adjust the height of this universal toolbar until it meets this angle in here. And that's going to give me exactly what I want. But what I'll do first, we'll give this a bill. How are we going on? The, there you go. Just going to hold that nice and flat on the side of the wheel. Up and down. And it's working quite nicely. Maintain even pressure. And where are we? There you go. You can see that crescent shape there. That's where that's been flattened. So that will do that. We'll put it in the clamp. and do the other part. Just make sure it's even in the clamp. Now with a bigger chisel, it's not so important, but with thinner chisels, you can, if you're not careful, you can clamp this unevenly, which will give you a twist in the blade. I'll put some ink on there, and then we'll see how we're travelling. I want 30 degrees, which I've got there. The wheel's at 240, so that's there. I'll put that there. That's pretty darn close, I think. Okay, tighten that off, turn it on, give it a couple of rubs, and then I just pull it off and see how close I am. And right there, you can see we're right on the very edge. Now, you could say, okay, no, I want to grind all my chisels down to 30 degrees. Quite frankly, there's no point. That's the only edge you're going to be using. It's got a nice burr on the back of it. So as you continue to sharp this over time, you will correctly bring that into alignment. But at the moment, you only need that edge, so that's all I do with that. And then you can go over to the um, honing wheel. And again, I've got two universal tool supports on this. You only get one when you buy it, but the amount of sharpening I do, for me, it's worthwhile having two because then I'm um, not pulling the bar out and swapping it over all the time. This one I will use a bit of compound. This is leather. Now I could use the ordinary strop. If I've got one here, why not use it? And we'll just very lightly backwards and forwards on the edge just to take that back burr off.
And that's basically all you need with that one. Habit of mine, <laughs> I'll still strop it. I don't know why, but I just, I just like doing it. And here we go. <laughs> Taking a huge chunk out of that one. So there you go. Um, I'm just thinking. Should I do the scissors? I'll do the... I, no, I don't know. I might do the scissors later. I don't know. I'm going to do them for scissors anyway. But anyway, that's it. So we're going from a dollar for a dollar forty for a sheet of wet and dry. You get a sharp chisel. You can go over a thousand dollars. You still get a sharp chisel. So it doesn't really matter what method you use. It comes down to basically what you want and whatever your budget is. There's no difference as far as I can see between flat ground and hollow ground because in the end your final cutting edge is going to be a flat ground one. I've shown you how to do it freehand, I've shown you how to use inexpensive jigs, I've shown you how to use diamond stones or ordinary carborundum stones. If you do use a, a grinder, uh, as I mentioned, get yourself a decent ceramic wheel and also get yourself a decent set of safety gear. These, as you know, I love iMuffs. These ones specifically are for grinding because they're sealed under here and around here and you don't get any sparks coming in. Whereas these are um, really good eye protection, but from personal experience, I've had sparks come up underneath here. So get yourself a decent set of goggles Hi, Marks. George, are you watching? G'day, mate. We're, we're going to catch up one of these days. We're going to catch up at the Brisbane Wood Show, but that's not on. Um, yeah, get yourself a decent pair of goggles and also um, whatever you call them, Head, uh, earphones, because grinding can be very, very noisy. Keep your eyes open on the... the um, Gumtree, Trading Posts, eBay, Garage Sales, for any things that comes up second hand because that's where you can buy a lot of them. Um, or if, you, if you're in a position you can, go buy new ones. And I guarantee if you do, they will last you for a long, long time. And like anything, you get what you pay for, I suppose. Uh, as I said, I started out that... In fact, is that one? No, I think it's this one in here. Here you go. This one, uh, where are we? There you go. This one, as you can tell, I have used for many, many years and it's just worn away on the edges. This one, I think that one cost me about $19 uh, 30 years ago. This one I picked up at an auction for about $15 and it's an Eclipse as well, but it hasn't had as much use. That one goes into my toolbox, and that one stays in my shed. I mean, that is the other thing. If, you, if you're a journeyman, if you're a handyman, if you're going around fixing things for people and doing on-site work, a lot of these machines, they're irrelevant if you've got to sharpen on the job. I'm fortunate. I've, I've got a truck, and it's got a generator, and it's got compressors and everything like that, so I can sharpen on the job. But if you can't, it's really nice to know you can grab a sheet of sandpaper or you can have um, a stone in your glove box and you can be straight about your business again and you don't stop. Because the idea of sharpening, no matter what people tell you or whatever pontification they get on their high horses and tell you about the molecular structures and grain direction and sharpness and all that, the only reason you sharpen things is to make your life easier when you're at the bench. So if you can find a way that's going to work for you, be about it and more power to you. That's it. Thus endeth the lesson according to Stephen. 
Oh, let, him, let me catch up here. Um, got the record power, copy the tool. Hey, record power, do a good one. Nice job on a, The thing I like about the record power one too is it actually has a speed control. So as your stone gets smaller, you can reduce the speed because as the stone gets smaller, it actually travels faster. There you go. But um, now I've got a friend of mine, uh, I helped set him up with the record one and it works well. They, I mean, to be fair, there's, there's record, there's Triton, there's Jet, there's Shepik, there's Works. Uh, there are a few generic ones around, home brand ones that different companies have. And, you know, they work. Some work more efficiently than others. Some you can work a bit harder than others. The thing I do like about the Tormic, uh, and I'll stress it's only the T8 and the T7, maybe the 2000, you can run them indefinitely. But when you get to the T4s, the 1200, that little jobby I bought out earlier that I bought so many years ago, you can only run those for about, they recommend 20 minutes at a time. So if you're going to do a lot of sharpening and let's face it, I used to, I used to say, okay, today I'm going to sharpen and I've got over 50 planes in my workshop. I'd sharpen all my planes, all my chisels. Strike knows how many chisels I've got, I haven't got a clue. And I'd have the Tormek running for eight hours. It'll be on all day. Uh, so that's something worth looking at. If it's just you in the, in the shed, and you're only going to do, you know, the planes or chisels every so often, most likely 20 minutes is more than sufficient for you. So just have a look around, read the fine print, see what they've got. Um, <coughs> wrong button. What button did I push? Did I just see the beginning intro there? Did I do that? Oh, I must have pretty okay. Am I back? I hope I'm back. There you go. He meant to change the camera, but he's fat figure. Good on you, Ray. Oh, it's nice to be loved. Just get a stone dresser, save the whole thing. Yeah, uh, look, Tormek has got stone dressers, which I also think you get with that. Um, you can buy them as an accessory for a lot of the other machines, or you can get, um, I've got a diamond stone that I dress my hot grinders with. And it's just a, a bar with a, I'll see if I can find it. If it's out here, if not, I'll just tell you. Oh, <clears throat> it's nothing suave or sophisticated at all. Is it there? No, it's not. I thought it was. But there again, I was right, I was mistaken. Um, all it is is a steel bar with a diamond on the tip and you just run that across to dress your wheel. There are other ones that have star dresses, which are metal uh, fragmented star shaped things. You put it on and they'll do the width of your wheel. And yeah, that's the other important thing. Keep your wheels as true as you can because there's nothing worse. If you've got a stone that's on an angle and you're trying to grind flat, you're going to be taking more out of one side than the other. So that's something to keep in mind. Going back to the Pro Edge, the club has 180 grit for re grind 120 sh for sharpening. My tools, 80 grit for re grind, two sharpening, and a con. Belt to start. Trizac. That's the other thing. Um, yeah, Trizac's another great belt. They, they are expensive, but apparently they work well. I haven't used them, but I've seen them, and they're good. Um, where are we up to? It's enough to make you stroppy. Oh, just got scissors to do. Oh, all right, I'll do the scissors. Hang on. Okay, so what is my, my preferred method? Flattening on the Makita, sharpening on the Tormek is my preferred method. And the thing I like about the Tormek, as I said, I don't put a secondary bevel on anything now in the sheds because I've got one here and I've got one up in the woodworking shed. And with that universal angle find, angle master, it doesn't matter what size my wheels are, I'm guaranteed exactly the same angle. So if I've, um, what's that skew? That's 30, I think, or is it 45? No, that's 45. My skew's at 45. If it, oh, that's another thing which I did mention quickly. If you've got a diamond stone, just run it up when your skew starts to get a bit, just do that and get back into it. 
Then when you've finished your job, you can go back and actually give it a proper regrind if you need to. I know Theo said with his skews, all he does is just puts it on the leather strop. But he doesn't use it as much as me. <laughs> Theo, are you watching? Um, yeah, so I know I can get exactly the same grind no matter what size my stone is. That's why that is my favourite all-rounder. And yeah, the Makita for flattening the backs and also the Makita for doing my planer blades and jointer blades. Again, the reason for that is I like a flat grind on my planer blades and um, jointer blades. So I hope that answers your question, Eggman. Um, thank you for your presentation. Head to the garage, time to sharpen chisels. <laughs> There you go, John. Have a good day. Don't get many catches, mate. You're welcome, Peter. Oh, it, you're welcome. Hey, and everyone at Carbotech on the Carbotech channel, thank you for your indulgence and your patience and your participation. If there are any questions, um, by all means, you can email me direct at admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au or send a message to Carbotech and I'm sure they will get in touch with me and uh, we will see if we can answer your questions. If you have any ideas for future topics you'd like to see, I'm starting to run a basic video um, uh, uh, playlist. I've just done one on saw cuts. The next one I'm going to do, which I'll do later in the week, is, excuse me, basic hand plane usage. And then I've got a basic... Um, job where we use basic skills and it's building a beehive box, native beehives. It's not the way I build them because the way I build them is a patented way that I've come up with but I'll show you how they've been built for about the last 20 or 30 years and it is still very durable and usable and it, it involves some basic hand skills. So if you want to get into that, that will be coming up oh, in a couple of weeks I think. Uh, all good. Uh, I started by sharpening when I was a kid on concrete steps. Well, oh, look, concrete works. It does. Anything that will abrade will work. Theo tells the story of his dad used to sharpen the razor blades on the inside of a, a glass. It will work. <coughs> uh, Hello, Stephen. How are you, mate? Good that you can join us. We're just about out, but there you go. We, 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 no, I was going to do this. Is I'll do them later, Louise. I might even film it and I'll put it up later because my back's just about had it. <clears throat> um, all the girls in my class hated the skew. I did too, and those of you that have heard the story before, please indulge me, but my dear friend, Master Woodturner, Theo Haralampo, Theo the Woodturner, he gave me jip because for 30 years I've been using the skew. I've been quite happy in the ignorance of using it wrongly. And he went, oh, don't you use it properly. You use it like a scraper. And it took me three weeks of very colourful vocabulary and much timber to conquer it and master it. Now I very, very seldom get a catch. And if I do get a catch... I know the reason why. It's because my concentration has lapsed for that micro millisecond. Um, but no, once you get into it, it's one of the best tools out there. I love it. It's good. Uh, bring on the beehives. Yes. Can you do a proper hand plane setup? Uh, yes, I can. I'll do that next stream if you like, uh, GB. Because as I said, my back's just about at it. Hey, Earl. How are you? I do have a couple on, if you check out uh, my video channel, there is some on there, but I will do another one live next stream. One girl cut through 10 metre in the first... <laughs> oh, no. Dear, oh, dear. Uh, bring on the beehives. I've done that one. Would they? everyone take care, stay safe? Has Max, don't mention the bed. I'm, I'm getting back into it because I've, I've been, I don't know, not out of sorts. Um, been a bit scattered of late. I think 57 days straight, st straight streaming did it to me. 
but I'm now coming down to doing only a few things and that is going to free me up to work on the bed. So I'm excited about that. Thanks for bringing it up, Max, and not mentioning the music stands. Take a second hand on you playing and set it up for use. I've got my first ones and they're poorly set up. Um, yeah, look, if you want, I'll quickly do it. All right, I've got, oh, I've got an old number four over here. Wait a minute, see if I can find an old number four. There we go. Oh, hasn't got a, that one hasn't got a knob on it. Oh, dear. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I don't know if this is sharp. But, yeah. Here, here's a number four. <laughs> As you can tell. Who's that out there? Russell. Russell, how are you, mate? Come in. There you go, that's, that's an old number four. I've just got a chap here. Yeah, hang in there, I've got to go and see him. I'll be back in about two seconds flat and I'll show you how to set up a hand plane. So, in the meantime, play I Spy. I'll be back. Oh. Oh. Hey, you, oh, great, mate, how you going? I'm great, how you going? Yeah, no, they've got to go in the bin. Oh. I had to get a new body for the lock, but I didn't use the barrel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mate, um, I went fishing yesterday. I got some fish in there. Esky there. Do you want to cook a whole fish? Have you ever wanted to do a whole fish? I don't know. What, I, just, I don't know. It's been cleaned and all that? No, no. Oh, no. No, no I'm over that. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was oh. Yesterday. oh, okay. Did you miss it? Oh, there you go. Well, I. And, and, I already saved your scabbard for you. Oh, look at you go. Yeah? So, I don't know how long it lasts. There's only polyester thread, but yeah, yeah. it might last. Yeah, mate. Mate, I'm we was robbed last night. Pardon? I know. Yeah, I was, I was. you Oh, normally on the storm. Oh, but right. the rabbitos are doing so well. They were. They held Parramatta's in the middle, but held the storms in the middle. But I think they left before they left the field. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, mate, I, I was ticked last night. I was going to do um, yeah, Not one of the work. It's good. All right, All right Russ. Thanks, mate. All right, cheers. Oh. oh dear, oh dear. Oh, all right, I'm back, I'm back. That's a chap lives up the road, he goes fishing, and I sharpen his fishing knives for him, and oh, he gives me fish. He's got some rainbow trout, no, not rainbow trout, coral trout. He's just pick his knives up so he can fill them. Yes, all right, number one, make a shore that, you got the right camera on, Dicky. Make sure that the frog is sitting nicely in there and the ramp of the frog is lined up with the back of the mouth. Don't have it coming forward, don't have it back. If it's forward, you're gonna bend your blade. If it's back, you're gonna kink your blade. Most times, this one hasn't, because it's a cheap one. I don't even know what this is. Is it a Stanley or is it a... <sighs> I don't know, it's made in Australia, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, um, some of the Stanleys have a screw here at the back where you can screw in to move the frog along. So make sure that's lined up there. That's number one. Then with your blade, Have the blade sharp, which I'm not going to go into sharpening those, but make sure the back of your cap, cap iron here, is nice and flat along here. Sometimes it's not flat. You have to put it on a stone and just flatten it on a stone like that. Because if there's any kinks in there or any high spots, shavings will go up there and clog your blade and clog your mouth. 
Obviously, flatten the back of your blade, make sure it's sharp. Then I set mine at about oh, 330 seconds, I suppose. Back, depending what I'm doing, if it's a um, smoothing plane and I'm finishing, I'll have it about that far back, which is about 3 sixteenths of an inch back. Nip that up. Then, where do we go? Pop that in there. Wiggle your lateral about so it seats. With your lever cap iron, put that on. Have it so there's a bit of pressure, but you're not forcing it, but it's not loose either. If it's too tight, loosen this screw off here. If it's too loose, just screw that in a little bit. And that's about right. And then look down the plane like that. See where your blade's sitting. This is, oh, it's sitting up a little bit high. Ugh. Okay, so I'm looking at that. That's sitting up a little bit high on this edge. Get your lateral lever. That's this lever thingy here at the back. Get your lateral lever and pull it or push it towards the side that's high. And you'll see it'll even out. And when you can barely see a blade, that's just about set. All right. And that's all there is to it. We'll bung it in and see what happens. Oh, you know, before I said about um, watering your vice, here you go, this will give you an idea. All right, that's tight. Lever's there. See how that moves? Remember where the lever was? I generally have a spray bottle, but I don't at the moment. Put that in, have the lever, levers in the same position. That will not move. I can nearly pick my bench up. Oh, it did slip then. There you go. I can nearly pick the bench up and that will not move. And there you go. So I hope that helped, GB. That's just a quick explanation how to set a plane up. Ha! Ah, that's it, I'm over it. I'm ready to go away. Oh dear, oh dear. Max, don't mention the bonbon table either. Oh, good, John. G'day, Yvonne. Nice to have you there. I hope your shoot went well. Oh. Too late, I've done it. <laughs> oh dear. Uh. Oh, that's it. All right, I'm up to date. I hope to be back soon too. So once again, thank you everyone for the joining in the chat. Lovely to be back on the stream. I've done three calls now, more than I intended to do, but I hope you got something out of it and there's some ideas there. And thanks for that um, tip, GB, uh, BG, about lanolin oil. I'm going to try that out. So for everyone who joined us on the simulcast, the very first simulcast, thank you to uh, Facebook and what is it? Blah, blah, blah. Carpetech Facebook, if you joined us through there, have a great weekend. And to all my regulars and new people that have come on and those that haven't even joined in the chat, jump in and say good day. If you've got any woodworking questions, just ask me, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge, which sometimes isn't all that good, but we'll give it a shot. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to finish my breakfast. Look at that. My milk's all curdled. Bob will eat it. Doesn't matter. This is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember, to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other, and I look forward to having your company in the workshop, at the workbench, again very, very soon. Till then, take care, God bless, 
and I'll catch you all later and follow the rules. See ya. Bye for now. I've lost my mouse. <laughs> Here we go. All right, I'll say it again. Bye for now. Hello, Bob.